What a grand and glorious day. I am so pleased to be back in Chicago, but more importantly, I am so pleased to be here to celebrate the class of 2019. I have to be honest, usually there's no greater risk to brevity than giving a historian a microphone and a captive audience. <laughs> but not today, because I'm humbled by the honor you bestowed upon me, and I will follow the advice of my youngest daughter, who was here last night, who said, the only way you can be sure people will applaud is if you start your speech by saying, I will be brief. <laughs> Thank you. I know that we rarely remember what a commencement speaker says, but what I do hope you remember is what you learned here, what you accomplished here, and I hope more than anything else, you remember and cherish the relationships that you built here. I am so humbled and honored to be part of this commencement at Northwestern. I envy you the amazing opportunity you've had to immerse yourself in a nurturing environment of learning, an environment, however, that also helps you figure out who you are. And as my youngest daughter said last night, okay, dad, tell me, like, why did they ask you? <laughs> well, I think I'm here in part to solve the angst of many parents. After all, I stand before you, a graduate of a liberal arts college with a history degree and a job. But I'm also pleased to be here because a college like this was transformative to my family. My paternal grandparents were sharecroppers. They lived on a plantation outside of Raleigh, North Carolina, where their parents and their grandparents were enslaved. For 27 years of their lives, they picked cotton, they chopped peanuts, they planted corn. But something inside them helped them realize that their lives were meant for much more that their hands were better suited for something besides picking cotton. So thanks to a college like Northwestern, they were able to attend classes at night. It took them 11 years, but they graduated college. And thanks to a college like this, they were given a chance. They changed their lives and they changed the trajectory of my entire family. And I have to be honest, I am so excited that my daughters are now the fourth generation of the Bunch family to graduate college because of the work of my great-grandparents. But this is more than a story about my family. It's a story about the individual's opportunity to affect change, the opportunity to change not only a family, but society. Thus, one of the most important lessons I've learned is to think beyond yourself, to realize that as college-educated adults, you should remember to fight the good fight, to remember that there is a greater good that transcends individual gain or personal achievement. So I would suggest that the burden, that the challenge for the class of 2019 is to find your own good fight, to find ways that you make America better, to realize that your skills, your creativity, and your educational achievements are crucially needed in this world we live in, and they're needed to make the country better. I've also been struck often by thinking about one of my dearest old friends, Studs Terkel, the great oral historian in Chicago. And Studs, near the end of his life, always said to me, I will never miss a picket, I'll never miss a fight, but you know what, Lonnie? I can't hear anymore, I can't see much, I can't stand. So Lonnie, do me a favor. All I ask you to do is point me in the direction where I can do good. And that's what I want you to keep in mind. I want you to always point yourselves in the direction where you can do good. Because candidly, as your life is gonna unfold, it's gonna zip by, and you're gonna have to learn to embrace ambiguity and change. I've always believed that once I graduated college, all the clouds would part, and my future would be clear in front of me and that there would be a calm certainty that would be my life. Yeah, right, I'm still waiting for that calm certainty. <laughs> but trust me, your lives will unfold in dramatic and small ways you could never conceive. I've learned that the only constant is change. 
I could have never imagined I would have a career that would take me from Washington to Massachusetts to California to Illinois to Washington. Or as my youngest daughter said, Dad, can you ever keep a job? <laughs> and I could never imagine that I would be part of a team that would build a national museum on the mall, a museum that allows us to use African-American culture as a lens to understand what it means to be an American. And candidly, I am still overwhelmed that I'm the 14th secretary of the Smithsonian. I'm stunned that they, I think they keep waiting for me to say, I'm not gonna take the job, but I'm here now. <laughs> Ultimately, your lives will require a nimbleness that your grandparents could never imagine. And I would suggest to you that maybe the third piece of advice I can give you is that no one is an island. Now, I know that sounds like a bad 1970s song, but I mean that at times the challenges will seem too great to bear, and you'll need to draw support and sustenance from others. Sometimes from people you, couldn't un you expect that that would never happen. That need to depend on others became clear to me in an event that I've rarely talked about. I grew up in a town where there were very few African Americans, and one day I was in a neighborhood that wasn't my own. I was playing baseball. And suddenly the game turned to attacking me. They attacked me with bats and rat and rocks. And I remember running, running trying to get away from this mob. And I ran and I was exhausted. And I ran into the front yard of a house that I didn't know. And I turned around and saw the mob coming. And I really thought that this was the end of my life. At 13, to think this was the end of your life. And then a little girl, a blonde girl, came out of the house and said, get off my property. And I thought she was talking to me, but rather she was talking to the mob. She stood between me and the mob, and candidly, she saved my life. And at that moment, I learned so much that help comes from unlikely places. I learned about generosity of spirit, and I learned a lot about race, and I learned about the goodwill of good people and how they can change a person's life. And I will never forget what she did to me. I have never seen that woman ever in my life but that instant changed me. Because not only did it stimulate my interest in history, but it helped me understand why race mattered. And it taught me never, ever, ever to generalize based on issues of race or gender. So no matter how fast one runs or how smart one is, there are many times when you'll need to draw that sustenance, that inspiration, that guidance from others. It is crucial that that well of sustenance that you draw from comes often from the people that you've met here. The support, the inspiration that comes from the faculty, the staff, and the students you've encountered here at Northwestern. It's true that the friends you made here and the professors you learned from will be the people you can count on the rest of your lives. And the key is don't be afraid to reach out in times of need because this experience here at Northwestern will help you navigate even the most difficult times of your life. For me, I learned to draw inspiration at college from history. It was at a college where I suddenly found the love of the past. I learned to draw inspiration from the Irish immigrant who left all she knew to take a chance for a better life in America. I learned to draw inspiration from the enslaved African who refused to let the field break her and strip her of her hope, her humanity. I learned so much because I was in awe of the industrial worker who spent years on the assembly line so that his children would not have to. And I learned to be so moved by the people who braved fire hoses and dogs in order to demand simple justice. It is because of the education that I received, that you received in college, that you are ready to face the challenges of the rapidly changing world outside of this campus. So let me end as I began by congratulating this wonderful class of 2019. But I wanna be clear, with this diploma comes the responsibility to use your skills, to use your creativity, to use your education to live a good life but that good life means making it better for someone else. But you also have the responsibility and the obligation to revel in this day, 
because you have got the opportunity to enjoy all the hard work you've put in. You've worked hard and you've been changed and you are ready for the challenges and opportunities that stand before you. So I wish you a life of joy, a life of peace, a life of surprise, a life of important work, and a life of wonder. Enjoy the ride.